Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the importance of purging while you're brazing. Tell me why it's important to purge while you yeah, braze. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about um, just kind of the do's and don'ts, right? Um, you know, when I first got in the field, th that wasn't really stressed to me how important it is. So for a couple of years, I'd go change a compressor, spark my torches, weld my stuff in, start it, life was good. Um, and then as I started getting in, working on bigger equipment, longer piping runs, I, it really started to get preached to me by, by the guys that were mentoring me. And now I, I really understand and I've seen it firsthand how important it is to purge with dry nitrogen while you're brazing with your oxygen acetylene rig or a B tank. So first thing you wanna do, obviously you gotta have the right setup. So here's my nitrogen bottle. Now I've just got a regular nitrogen regulator on there that's zero to 550 PSI. When we're purging with our nitrogen while we're brazing, if you can imagine a long stick of copper, we're gonna have an end pinched with a little fitting in there and we're slowly gonna be introducing nitrogen at about two to three PSI as we're brazing. So you can use this, it's a little tough because it's zero to 500 to get right, or the, the better thing to use is an actual purging regulator. You know, you can get by with this in a pinch, but you really need a purging regulator. You can dial it in much closer, there's no guesswork with it. And it, it can also substitute a regular regulator as well. So it's kind of a dual purpose tool, little more costly, but not too bad and well worth its money. So we, we'd have that set up, we'd be introducing dry nitrogen through there. Got a little setup here where I'm gonna make a couple braze joints, but I'm gonna do it without nitrogen to attempt to demonstrate the adverse effects that you can have on your refrigeration system, whether it be a residential split system, a VRV system with a thousand foot of pipe in there, if you can just imagine how many braze joints would be in a system like that. So we'll spark the torches up here. What I always want our guys to have with them is fire suppression, a fire extinguisher with them. You need a water with bucket. You guys out there in the field, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Not only helps you cool your pipe down to move on quicker, but you may have to protect things around the piping, wires, etc. Good to have a bucket with a wet rag in it. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start up here. You're just using 15% silver. And we'll make a couple quick raises, rough and sloppy. The best braze is the one that doesn't leak. Don't let everybody tell you any different. So everybody's got their own methods. I like to heat my pipe up a little bit, drop a little bit of solder on it, keep heating until I see that solder start to bead and run. This is a seven eighths pipe, so I'm gonna use a little bit bigger tip. I like using the baby rosebud, I like to call them. But again, brazing is, everybody's got a different way. It's all about what you're comfortable with and making a good solid braze joint that's not going to leak. So you move your flame around a little bit, get that pipe hot all the way around. Let that solder run. We'll move on, braze this T in real quick. So you get the right temp and it's going to pull, it's going to pull yeah. it in. You, like, a lot of guys will just wait and let it run all at once. I like to get a little dab on there mm -hmm. and then once I see that start running, I'll know I'm ready to go. And very similar to soft solder, you'll see it start getting pulled into the pipe, but obviously we don't use flux paste when we're brazing. The cleaner your copper, the cleaner your silphos rod, the quicker your braze is gonna go. Looks like a nice, good, clean braze there. So now we're gonna cool it off a little quick, just for the sake of time. Take my wet rag. I like to start kind of in the middle of the pipe. I don't wanna shock it and lay it right on the hot part. So, you know, we'll let this cool down a little bit. Um, of course, you guys in the field, striker, you know, lighter works, but the striker's safe. You don't really wanna use a lighter. Just continue to cool down and we'll do a little example of the carbon that will be trapped inside this pipe. So if I'm purging with nitrogen like I should have just been doing, 
it's going to keep the inside of that pipe spotless, like brand new. You will not get any kind of carbon buildup from brazing. So like I was saying before, I mean, if you just imagine a system like this, I could have 1,500 foot of pipe. So you're in there, you could have hundreds of braze joints in that, in that system. The biggest issue you get from not purging when you braze and you get carbon buildup inside, that pipe's dirty inside until you turn your system on. And then it's clean because that refrigerant oil flushes it out and it all ends up right back in your compressor, in your metering devices, in your filter screens. It's bad news, especially on a system with a lot of pipe on it. Give this one more dab. I'll burn my soft little hands here. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Like that with this guy. So hopefully this will pick up on camera good. I'm just going to give this a tap right on this detector tail. Okay. So I don't know how well you guys can see that. That was two brace joints. All that is now in my system. Mr. Homeowner, Mr. Customer, they're not gonna like us too much if we do that kind of work. So it seems like it's time consuming. There's a little bit of extra tools involved. It is, it adds time to your job. But in the long run, you save time because you got a happy customer. You're not getting callbacks. You don't get more revenue out of that customer. That's, right. and that's what I got. Right. Thanks, Brian. Check us out at Mechanical Pros. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we'll see you next time.